uh, in respect of many of these technological projects of, of, of immortality. What survives is not the person who once lived. In um, uh, Kurzweil's version, as I understand it, uh, uh, what is proposed is that elements of the conscious mind, of the conscious self of the people concerned, are somehow uh, uh, programmed, computed, and then projected into cyberspace where that self-aware um, mind can um, create a variety of bodies for itself in a virtual environment. So rather than having the one frail, aging, vulnerable uh, body that we each of us have um, to start with, uh, people can have a whole variety of different bodies, different genders. When they get bored with them or want to change them for other reasons, they can have as many as they want. My objection is that what would survive would not be the person, because first of all, it would only be the parts of the person which are conscious and can be programmed. And my view is that um, the larger part of each of us and a large part of where our creativity uh, in, in our lives comes from, both artistic and intellectual creativity, is not conscious. It's in, uh, it's, it, it's in part of ourselves which is not accessible to conscious awareness. So if um, uh, uh, my conscious life, my conscious intellectual life is somehow encoded, encrypted, and then projected into a, a virtual afterlife. Um, what there will be out there will be a th sort of thinned out cartoon of the person, a thinned out image of the, of the whole person I, I once was. And I'm um, not interested in that kind of immortality. I wouldn't accept it if I were offered, offered it. Um, I might very well accept uh, an extension of, longe of healthy longevity of the kind that Aubrey de Grey talks about. Um, we are already living longer and healthier than many previous human generations did. I see nothing inherently wrong with that. But indefinite longevity is not immortality. And it's not the kind of radical freedom from bodily frailty that um, futurists such as Kurzweil want. Mm -hmm.